with the draft being i've said that for like what three videos now that the draft is over we get it doug the draft's over move on but we are going to talk free agency and austin jackson had something very interesting to say and uh there's a picture i want to show you it's not of me i swear it's not of me what is up finn fans it is officially hump day wednesday the first of may it is a finally may uh, i told you guys about all the um my brain dates i will recap the dates towards the middle to end of the video talking about otas that are happening at the end of the month also tomorrow is the last day you could place the fifth year option or pick up the fifth year option on certain players the dolphins already did it with bradley Ch bradley chubb i'm looking at him that's why jalen phillips and jalen waddle so we're, we don't have to worry about that and of course today is now i think it was monday or yesterday that the dolphins now could sign whoever they want for however much they want and it does not affect the comp pick that they will get for robert hunt and christian wilkins which is a third as of now but again the way the comp pick works they also have to play a certain amount of time um for that to stay a third or it will drop down a la juan james we're supposed to get a third for Juwan James because he signed a fat contract with the Denver Broncos. Then he got hurt and it dropped down to like, I think a fifth hot garbage. But anyway, I got a little tidbits of notes and then we're going to jump into free agency. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven names that intrigue me. And none of them are running backs because we don't need a running back anymore because we got Jalen Wright. So let's first and foremost, this is what Austin Jackson had to say. So Austin Jackson talked to the media and he said <clears throat> he was asked about the turnover on the offensive line, but said the value of having the same O-line coach for the first time in his career allows them to not have to go back to square one. Um, he was also asked about Butch Berry and he said uh, very forward and working with each individual one by one. He would do things like call guys one-on-one -on -one after meetings, which hasn't happened since college. Guys don't spend time at this level. He can do that because he's so serious about his work, his personality too. His he's passionate about the job, and that take and that makes it easy for players to feed into him. He has the tools to help everybody. I remember, you know, going back to 2022, was it? When we signed Butch Berry as our offensive line coach, and the Denver Bronco fans were like, ho, 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 you got Butch Berry, ho, ho, ho. And then some of the Bronco players were like, woof, this guy stinks. Good luck in the, uh, Miami with Butch Berry. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, that panned out real well for the Miami Dolphins because Butch Berry is probably one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. And I talked about it when we signed him, how... <clears throat> You look at the injuries he had to deal with, you had to look at concrete feet, Russell Wilson, and you had to put it all together, and Butch Berry actually did a really good job, and it shows again last season how well of a job he did when Keon Smith had to come in, when Kendall Lamb had to come in, when Liam Eikenberg had to go in at center, the mound, the mass and mass and mass amounts of uh, turnover we had on the offensive line all have to, you know, Give it to the players, but also to Butch Berry. And like Austin Jackson said, this is now finally the continuity that Austin Jackson can finally get where he's not having to start at square one with a new guy and a new techniques and new this, new that. It's the same thing. And a lot of the offensive linemen are coming back, minus Connor Williams and Robert Hunt. So they still have a familiarity with each other as well. So... <clears throat> I'm hoping and praying, I think we're all hoping and praying that this offensive line, you know, stays healthy and stays, you know, continuity-wise um, better than it did last season. So I thought that was interesting coming from Austin Jackson. I wanted to share that information with you. I also want to share this picture. I said I got a picture. I said Bradley Chubb instead of um, Jalen Phillips. Well, that's because of this. This is a picture of Chop Robinson and our very happy head coach, Mike McDaniel, and Bradley chubb they i think this was at the contract signing or the meeting with chop and then chop went and got his helmet fitted and all that stuff future duos you got him and chop you got phillips and chop you got 
um, Shaquille Barrett and Chapo. You got it's just we have now finally. I went into the draft worried about oh, and then Muhammad Kamara. I can't forget about him. We got five pass rushers now. When I went into the draft worrying because we had one healthy one in Shaquille Barrett, now we got five, and then possibly three healthy with one coming back in Jalen Phillips, and we'll see what's happening with Bradley Chubb. I feel comfortable with the pass rush. You know for a fact, um, Anthony Weaver was like, listen. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a little bit more pass rush ability because we don't know what's going on with Chubb and Phillips is coming off a torn Achilles. Yes, he's doing good, but we don't know. Can you get me two? And then Muhammad uh, Kamar sitting there and they're like, and he's like, take him, <laughs> please take him. So I feel much better with that. That being said, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what this video is about, and that is. The second kind of wave of free agency. Now, there are players who got cut. I think there's already one who got cut because of um my brain, the draft, and that's Zay Jones, the wide receiver. He was cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars because they went out and got Thomas Jr. and some other wide receivers. So he was a casualty. You're going to see more guys going to be released. So... Now's the time where teams who, okay, I didn't add this, I didn't add that, and I kind of need to add a piece or two, like I said in yesterday's video, are going to start adding guys. So I wrote down a list, kind of gave a little bit of details on who I thought, why I thought, and will they do it. Now, do I think the Dolphins are going to sign anyone on my list? Yeah. I think they'll sign one guy on my list. Um. But outside of that, no, I don't think they'll sign anyone because every time I'm like, they should sign this person, they don't do it. And then all of a sudden that person pans out to be like pretty good. Like I wanted them to sign, um, oh, my, it's just his name. His name will pop in my head when I'm in the middle of something else. But I wanted them to sign a backup quarterback. They did and he ended up going somewhere else. He actually did pretty well. And then we were stuck with um, Jacoby Brisket. So not always right, but when I am, I don't like it because then I'm like, oh, just, just did what you had to do. So now we're going to run down this list. Now, it's not like, hey, they need to go out and sign him first versus the bottom of my list. It's just I was just writing names down and then giving stats and stuff. First on my list, Dalton Reisner. The Dolphins have already come out and said pre-draft that they have talked to two uh, starting quality guards and told them to kind of, hey, we will get back to you after the draft. Like, if we can't grab a guard or two in the draft that we feel comfortable with, we're going to go back and talk to you. They never said who it was, right? They never said. I think it was um, Dalton Reisner and then the guy that was on the Jets that was on the 49ers. Comment below because my brain's not working right now. I thought it was him. But for me, Dalton Reisner makes the most sense because of the Butch Berry connection. Some people say he doesn't match the scheme. Well, neither does Liam Eikenberg. Him and Liam Eikenberg are the same style of players. Liam Eikenberg isn't that mobile, fast pulling guard that's going to help with his own run scheme. So if they're going to stick with Liam Eikenberg, you might as well bring in a Dalton Reisner. And Dalton Reisner, <clears throat> new um, agent, is the one that the Dolphins have a huge connection with. I'll let you guess who that is. You can you can comment that below because he's Tyreek Hill's agent. He's all the Dolphin uh, players' agents, and he has a huge connection. I'm just gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. If go ahead, you know who it is. Um, so that is the connection there. But he did really well. Don't rise and did well. 740 snaps last year. He had zero sacks given up. A 96.7 pass block uh, efficiency. Um, and he only signed a one-year, $3 million contract last year with the Minnesota Vikings. And he kind of pushed the, the guard that they had in there out and did a really good job. So if the Dolphins can go ahead and grab him for like another one-year, three, four million dollars, I don't see why not. And then you have a legit competition. And again, it'd be nice to have him because, God forbid, Isaiah Wynn doesn't stay healthy like he did not last year. Because when Isaiah Wynn was healthy, it did help. Having Dalton Reisner being able to come in and either play start or be a viable piece to plug in somewhere would make us all feel, feel easy. So Dalton Reisner, the other one, they offered him a contract. Joshua Dobbs. 
I see. I knew it was going to come to me. I knew it was going to come to me. I wanted the Dolphins to sign Joshua Dobbs as the backup. They went out and got Jacoby Brisket. Joshua Dobbs as in as his interim backup role with a bunch of different teams has done pretty well. I think we would have won more games than one and seven. Joshua, it was Joshua Dobbs. <laughs> See, I knew it was just gonna fly out of my head. Um, Odell Beckham. They offered him a contract already. Now, will he take it? Won't he take it? This is where you know he can decide okay you know no one's offering me anything or no one's offering me anything and plus it's Miami and the Tyreek's there Waddle's there it's Miami I like Mike McDaniel it's Miami you know what I'm saying but a lot of people are poo-pooing Odell right why would we want him there he's a diva this this and that first and foremost I don't think he has that diva mentality anymore I think he's been pretty humbled Especially, you know, you go play for the Ravens. They don't tend to have diva mentalities in their locker room. Also, they're like, I ah, he sucks. He's not good anymore. This is where you got to wrap your head around what they're looking for, whether it's Odell or some other names I might throw at you. They're not start. They're not being the number one, number two wide receiver. They're being the guy that Tyreek is doubled, Waddles doubled, boom. Th- this guy is. We can rely. Oh, it's third and two. Third and three, drop back, you look, Tyreek's um, cover it. I know I have OBJ on an in route. I can hit him. He's going to catch it because he's had one drop last year. He had 69 targets, one drop, 599 yards, 15.4 yards per reception with a 77 PFF reception grade. So he he's going to catch that ball, especially in the end zone, especially in different situations. So instead of trying to throw a fade to um, Tyreek Hill, or you're relying on Chase Claypool and not knocking him with that Buffalo game with that sloppy out route, it would be Odell Beckham who would run a crisper out route and make the catch and fight for the ball, come down field and fight for the ball. That's the thing that people have a miscommunication about. Yes, a lot of times if you're the quarterback and you see and you know he's going to run an out route and you have a safety over top and a corner behind him, you're going to throw it underneath a little bit and have the receiver come down and fight for the ball and not throw it too far and cause an interception. So <clears throat> that's all stuff that I'll talk about when we break down to his film breakdown. But Odell makes sense. And like I said, they already offered him a contract. There's also Tyler Boyd who's out there. Supposedly the Dolphins have been in discussion with him. There's the the report out there that there was another receiver that the Dolphins kind of offered somewhat of a contract or kind of they the the player asked like, hey, this is what we're looking at contract wise. And the Dolphins were being stingy, um, saving cap space is what he said. And I feel like it was Tyler Boyd. 91 targets, three drops, 6,600, 66, 667 yards, 10 yards per reception is 64.4 PFF reception grade. So Odell was a little bit better. A little bit better. Um, so if I had to choose between the two, I'd go with Odell. Again, veteran, better hands, and have him in the situations where we need him, where, God forbid, our guys are blocked up. You know, you can have him and Janu, and then all of a sudden, more options. That's my thought process on that. And then you got Kyle Wright, uh, Jalen Wright coming out of the backfield. And so it's offense. It's going to be nice. Then we have Justin Simmons. I apologize for constantly calling him the wrong name. Um, And when it gets stuck in there and I start talking fast, the name kind of sticks. So I apologize. Justin Simmons, 15 games played, not, he missed a few, kind of bothered me. But the one game he missed was the Miami game, which is interesting. Would we still have scored 70 if he was playing? Probably. Um, 985 snaps. He had one sack, three interceptions. And when he was targeted, he gave up an 85.9 passer rating. He's still very good. And there's some other safeties that are out there that I was scrolling through. And I'm like, wow, how are these guys still out there? And it's because these safeties aren't like like Jamal Adams. I know Jamal Adams isn't what he was when he left the Jets. But like there are some still viable good safeties out there. Also, Justin Simmons played more free safety than he did in the box. Where that's where we could put Javon Holland because we know how well Javon Holland was playing in the safety doing spying against Josh Allen. So there's that. Then also Connor Williams. Now, here's the thing about Connor Williams. I think the Dolphins would like to bring Connor Williams back. I think the Dolphins are keeping an eye and an ear on Connor Williams. Again, same agent that um, my brain's not working. <laughs> Dalton Reisner has, Connor Williams has. Rosenfeld. 
So same agent. Um, and he was talking about that there's no rush. And I think the Dolphins right now are kind of keeping in touch with him. How are you feeling? How's the rehab going? Because apparently the, the injury is worse than came on. Um, so he's he's probably not going to be signed anytime soon. He might not even be signed for the season or until he could show that he can do things and will play this season. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does show that, that the Dolphins kind of bring him on. You know, it could be for a little bit or, you know, if he's shown that, he, oh, I'm, I'm good to go. He can start and then, brew, you know what I'm saying? But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out, but I'm not saying it's going to happen with uh, Connor Williams. And then there's two receivers. I'm not saying, again, I want OBJ, but you got Chark. I had Zay, Zay Jones being cut. I don't think he fits, but you got Chark. But Michael Thomas. Now, Michael Thomas was teased. Um, kind of like in the middle of free agency and even Tyreek Hill had something to say about Michael Thomas. So for me, uh, and Michael Thomas is a good slot, you know, we all talk about slant how he's like the slant King and stuff like that. For me, it would be between Odell and Michael Thomas, but I lean more towards Odell because Odell has a wider range of route running and he's a little bit better in my mind. So overall, when I look at these free agents that I wrote down, the three I want, I kind of already talked about, is Dalton Reisner, Odell Beckham, and Justin Simmons. Not Jeffrey. Again, if it gets stuck in there, I'm going to have a hard time getting it out when I start talking too much. They add those three guys, and I think they could do it for a decent price. Like, again, Dalton Reisner, you could probably get him for $3 million. Odell, I can imagine they offered him, like, around eight. And Justin Simmons, I don't know what they would offer him, but safeties aren't going for big money. Um especially guys that are still available. They add those three guys. I'm I'm good. I'm good going into the season. Let's get ready for OTAs, which I told you I was going to tell you. Uh, if you don't watch the other video towards the end, OTAs start on the 20th of this month, and those dates are – I think I got rid of it. I had a whole little font for you guys. I'll just tell you. 20th, 21st, 23rd, 28th, 29th, and 31st. There's six OTAs this month. Then they start mini camp in June. I think it's the weekend of the 4th, um, which, no, the week of the 4th. And then they take a break and then training camp. So we're getting close to training camp. I will be down there for training camp. I'm going to go down for a game. I'm going to the MetLife Takeover. I'm being very active this season. So I hope I see you guys around. Uh, but comment below. Let me know what you think of my free agents. What do you think of what Austin Jackson had to say? And again, if you want to be part of the comment of the day, just leave a comment of the day before your comment. It doesn't have to be a question. It just could be a comment, and I'll pick one of you guys. But other than that, I'll see you tomorrow. But like usual, stay classy. And fence out.